Hi, my name is Michiel Soer and I'm a PhD at the IC Design Group of the University of Twente. And I would like to show you the chip that I designed for my PhD. So, we start with a signal generator, which make a signal, which is sent here into our simulated uh, transmitter antenna. Where we simulate the free space propagation with the cable. So the signal travels and travels until it comes at the receiving antenna, goes through the cable here towards our IC, which processes the signal uh, and then outputs it here through the cable towards our spectrum analyzer and our oscilloscope. So, in this way we can send information from our transmitter to our receiver. However, if there is a second source available, like here, where we have a second transmitting antenna with a second signal with a different frequency, uh, both signals will travel to the same receiving antenna, are being processed in the same manner by the IC, and will mix up at the output, making communication impossible. In the frequency domain, we can clearly see two signals with different frequency, our desired signal and our interference signal. However, in the time domain, there is no clear distinction between the two sinusoids anymore and our received signal will be disturbed by our interference. So we have the problem that our desired signal is being interfered by the second source and we cannot send our information anymore. We can solve this problem by adding a second antenna to our system. Here is the second receiving antenna which is connected to the second input of our IC. This receiving antenna receives again the signals from the desired transmitter and the interfere transmitter. So you can see here that because of the different location of our interferer, we have a different path length to the two receivers, indicated by this extra piece of cable here. Because of that, the signal from the interferer will arrive at a later moment at this antenna than it will at our second antenna. Yeah. So now that we have two antennas, we can perform beam forming with our chip. Right now, the IC sums the output of the two receiving antennas, which still does not solve our problem of the interferer jamming our desired signal. However, the IC is also capable of inserting a delay in one of the channels before summing up so that one signal is rejected and that the desired signal can come through again. If we send the digital code through our interface to the chip, we can now see that we have got the original signal back again and that on the spectrum analyzer the interferer has been reduced to levels where communication is again possible. To summarize, if we have a transmitter with an interferer and a single receiving antenna, we have a problem with communication. But by adding our second antenna and the beam forming chip, we are able to suppress the interferer and get the original signal back. So my real work for my PhD is in designing this beamforming chip, which on our measurement board is located beneath the tower here in the small black package. This package contains the actual chip, which is implemented in an advanced 65 nanometer CMOS process. Chips are mass produced on big wafers like this one and then cut out and put into packages like the one you saw. To test the chips on these wafers, we use these probe stations. These probe stations consist of a plateau with the wafer on top and a microscope to check the positioning of the needles to measure the chip. Here you can see the probe heads 
with the needles contacting the chip which are too small to see on this scale. When we look through the microscope, we can now see the needles contacting the chip. This is my office where we do the design work for our chips we make for ICD. The chip process starts with a schematic design where we place the components and make the interconnections. We can then simulate this design with our simulator to determine if the performance is adequate. After the schematic work is done, we design a layout which forms the actual chip. We have developed a program which we can use to view this layout in 3D and walk through the layout to check for possible errors and the architecture of the chip. Here is our 1 by 1 millimeter chip in 65 nanometer CMOS where we have seven metal layers on top of each other to connect the transistors which are at the bottom. Here we zoom in at one of our clock dividers where down below in red are the 65 nanometer transistors which are connected by the metal stack from the bottom to the top. This looks very much like flying through a city with multiple buildings which are connected by highways. To conclude, here at the IC Design Group at the University of Twente, we start with the system design, then work our way down to a single individual transistor to make real designs, to measure them and to publish them at the big conferences.